Hey everybody, welcome back to my shop. And today, we're gonna build this chainsaw milling station. Now I first built one of these about three years ago after I seen some different versions online, and I figured it'd be about time to make a new one, so why not bring you along with me to show you how I did it. Now the only thing I'm not super happy with is I didn't have any two by 10 or two by 12 materials for this upper, upper platform over here, but these two by eight should be more than enough. But please excuse if the video is not perfect, I'm not a maker per se, and I'm dealing with very minimal space as I'm going through a lot of renovations right now, but I took as much time as I could to explain the rhyme and reason behind the dimensions and everything along the way, so that if you wanna build this, you can build yours right the first time. Please follow along in the description as each step has the dimensions of the lumber down there, so you can go step by step as you build it. But please remember, this is not an instructional video and it is meant for entertainment purposes only. Your safety is your responsibility, so let's get started. Now before we actually get into the build portion of this video, I figured I'd briefly explain the basic features of this milling station. Now over time you're going to find way more ways to use this and it's going to save you a lot of time and energy, but here's just the basic uses. Over here we have this V platform and this is for cutting logs in half mainly. So you have the V so that the round log can sit in here and it'll remain stable. Once you have your blanks milled to that extent, you take them over to this side and you clamp them to this nose and then you can use your chainsaw to round them off. Let's do a quick example. Now remember these are just basic examples. So you can put it in the V section there and you can trim the ends. On really big logs, you can take and cut a flat on each side so that you can mount it on the lathe easier. And then you could mill your two bowl blanks and then a center strip down the center that will include the pith. And then you can either flip that slab sideways or put it there and then mill those little quarter sections out of that slab. But we'll see how, how nice and stable this remains. Here I have a, a larger bowl blank of Manitoba maple. It's actually already dry. It's been drying as a slab, but this is exactly what you could have as your bowl blank here on the end to round off. And we just take a clamp, clamp her down nice and secure, and now you're able to kind of just work around the piece. And you can either put a circle template on top and follow that, or just nibble off the corners little by little. Whatever works best for you. Make sure she's good and tight. There. And within, you know, a couple minutes of milling, you've got a bowl blank ready for, ready for the lathe. Not perfectly round. Like I said, you can use a circle template, but there's your quick example. Now let's get building. Okay, so we're going to start out with the base of the milling station, which is very simple. We've got two 48 inch lengths and we got two 15 inch lengths. So once we put the 15s inside of the 48s, we're going to come up with 18 inches of width. So we're just going to attach these with some simple deck screws. And I'm working on a nice flat station here to keep it simple. Make sure it's nice and square. Okay, so next we're going to attach these upright pieces that are going to go just on the inside here. Now just a couple quick notes on these. I like to put them at a height where the highest point, 
sitting on something down there. Where the highest point of the tallest one is still below my waist by at least a couple inches. Uh, the reason being is that once we put our work surfaces on here, it's going to be another inch and a half taller. And also, once you put a log on there, it's going to sit high. So if you have it too high, you're going to be lifting your chainsaw much higher than you should be to start the cut. You want your chainsaw never to go above your shoulder height. So even if you had a really big honking piece of wood on here, it wouldn't be too high to start the cut. And it's not going to be too low to end the cut. So that's the reasoning behind how you want to set your heights. And uh, so you'll have to customize things. I'm likely shorter than you, so you'll probably have to have everything a little bit taller than what the dimensions I've put in the description. Um, but just remember, when you adjust the heights, you have to adjust both the uprights on this side and the upright on this side, because the height matters over on this side as well. And uh, just remember, these are two by fours, and so they're three and a half inches across. So to get the heights to line up, just make sure that the taller piece is three and a half inches taller on the point than the measurement to the point on the shorter piece. So let's get these attached. So we're just going to take the longer one first and put it towards the outside. Make sure that is the longer one. And we're just going to... Oh! Okay. We'll just put, put it nice and tight into the corner. And we're just going to make sure that we're good and level. There we go. There, three should do it. And then we're going to put another one in. But it's straight up and flat against the other one. Okay, next we're going to attach the second set of uprights, making sure that the 45 degree opposes the other side so we get that nice V. And what I've done here is I've marked a line three and a half inches distance between the two. Now that gives you room for your chainsaw bar to fall between, so you're not always running into your uprights. Now if you do much smaller work, like say you're milling up a lot of six inch diameter logs, maybe you would want to move that in just a little bit so they don't start to pinch the cut by pushing, pushing in on the log. And if you do really big work, like we're talking 20, 24 inches, you might want to space them out to maybe four, four and a half, because sometimes the pith in those things you're cutting out are this big. And so you don't want to always have to be running into the uprights. So let's zip this on there. We'll start with one screw again, and then we'll make sure she's square. Perfect. Now maybe I should be putting two screws in the bottom so it gives it some more strength, but I mean, this is nothing heavy duty. We're just putting wood on top to cut it. The other one on. Okay, I'm just going to do the same to the other side and then we'll work on the front upright. Okay, next we're going to attach the front up right here. I've marked center on the frame, on the base, and I've met, marked center on the upright so we can get it nicely centered. So we're just going to throw a couple screws in there. Again, one screw in and make sure it's nice and level. Next we're going to have to put this cross piece on that will make the front platform of the milling station. But what we're going to need is a cross brace here for it to sit on. So we need that brace, the top of that brace, to be the exact same height as this front cross piece. So we're going to mark on each side that same height, whatever height you choose, and then we'll line this brace up to that point. So my height for the front platform is 26 inches, so I'm just going to mark 26 on this back piece, 26 on this front piece, I'm going to take my square so I can get nice straight, oh man. Nice 
Now I know I can put that brace up to right where I want it. Now here's a tip I've seen from Essential Craftsman, and I believe also the Crazy Framer did this on YouTube, where if you got a lot of screws to nail in, or to drill in, screw in, whatever, just give them a couple taps with the hammer into the wood first, and now you don't have to take all the time setting them with the bit, you can just drive them home. But it also works nice in a situation like this, where, you know, I have limited hands and I don't want to, you know, struggle with these screws. So, there, I've got it lined up that top line, I'm flush with the outside. Still flush. I'm going to do this one over here, and I'm going to hold this other piece, because these 2x4s have a bit of bows and twists and stuff, so I'm going to pull them in flush, make sure everything stays. Well, there goes that theory. It works if you know what you're doing. Nice and flush. And then this guy can go on top of that. Okay, I'll throw that on off camera. Next we're going to give these uprights a little bit more support by bracing them with this kind of a box system all the way around. But the one thing we want to make note of is that we don't want to run into it all the time with the chainsaw. So we don't want it up real high. So we're going to bring it down just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is pick a height, I guess about 16 inches. I'm going to mark that height all the way around with a line and then hang these boards up and it'll become a lot more strong. Installing all these additional braces may seem like overkill at first, but it's going to keep all the uprights very rigid, which will help prevent them from loosening up over time. I just want to explain one little thing I'm doing here. See, this guy over here is already good and tight in the corner. So we can just... We can just screw her down. But this guy's still got that little bit of a gap. So I'm going to pull over with my hand. But what I'm also going to do is my first screw that I'm going to set, I'm going to aim towards it. So then when it meets the smooth part of the shank of the screw, it'll help me using the surface area of the head of the screw, it's going to lock into this board while the threads are still pulling further in when they're in this board. It'll help pull it right over towards this board and against the other board. So I'm going to pull it over tight by hand first, so it's snug to begin with, and then it'll just finish clamping it in. I could feel it just tighten right up as I did that. And then this next screw, I'll just go straight back into shooting at 90. So, there, braces are all around now. Ah. Now we're just going to throw a couple little braces up on the front, just to keep it from getting too wobbly over time. So we got a little midway point there on our line. As I'm lining that up, I'm making sure this is good and flat on the bottom part. Throw one in here. I throw one like a toe. That'll be good. Now the other one can just match up to it. If I can do it, you can do it. That's how I look at it. There we go. I mean, those could be a little bit more even, but good enough, as they say. Oy. Should I edit that out or not? I'm also going to throw a couple little braces up on either side here. And they're a little bit for strength, but also it'll add a little bit of extra width for when you're milling your bowl up on this side. It'll turn that 3.5 inch 2x4 into about a 6.5 inch wide surface. So when you clamp it down, it can get a little more flat onto the wood. Again, if you're milling really... That's pretty good. If you're milling really small bowls, then maybe these won't be necessary and they might even be a hazard because 
if you are only milling like say seven eight inches in diameter kind of size bowls you might skim and hit one of these screws one time and then you're gonna to have to spend 20 minutes resharpening your chain again that's never fun Yeah, throw one up on the other side. And the last thing we have to do is attach these work surfaces up here to create the V platform. So we're just going to kind of get them centered first. And you can see they have a little bit of overhang. That way if you're milling sideways here, you have a little bit more clearance with the chainsaw from everything. And we're going to make sure... Eyeball it at first, I guess. And then we're going to take a block of wood, slide it up and down the the upright here so we know we're clearing it and we're just going to tack it in place first make sure we're really nice and even so tack her down make sure this side clears now the problem is if we just use these screws and we run into them with our chainsaw while we're milling which is very very likely because they're right by the surface of the wood we're going to have to spend again some time sharpening our chain and we try to avoid that as much as we can. So what I did is I went to the shop and got some scrap wood and I milled these little dowels. So we're going to go ahead and drill them out. Now we'll just insert the dowels. a little loose that's okay they don't have to be super tight they're just pinning it in place eh? probably could have made them a little tighter I'm not too concerned though yeah that one's pretty loose too we'll see okay we're gonna take the screws out now and if I find that it's a little bit too loose you know what I'll go and whittle away four new dowels oh we need the battery in there There, so it'll work a little better now. Yeah, that's a little loose. I'm gonna go whittle four new dolls. Okay, let's try this again. Yeah, that's gonna be a lot more tight. You don't want them so tight that it'll split the wood, but you want it tight enough that this thing's not just gonna pluck off every time you're every time you're milling. You could glue them in there, but I want to be able to take this off and replace it every once in a while after I've marred it all up and everything. I mean, you could go as far as putting a wedge in the end and ay ay ay, but we're we're let's keep it simple here. There, see? Wiggles a little bit on this side, but that ain't going nowhere. It's just a platform. All the pressure is always exerted down. You might pull on it with your chain, but there's enough tension in there. It should be okay. I'll just repeat the procedure for the other side, and she'll be good to go. So here's the completed milling station. It's much more solid than it needs to be, but it'll last for years. If you're going to be having it outside or in a place where you know the bottom pieces will be against some wet ground or whatever you might want to put a couple of treated two by fours just underneath and uh, it'll keep it up off the ground and keep the wood from rotting out prematurely I'm probably going to throw a coat of polyurethane, thin polyurethane that I've got sitting around that I I don't really want to use on a nice project so I'll use it up on this and it'll help protect a little bit further this thing's ready to mill hundreds if not thousands of bowl blanks and it's going to last a long time thanks for tuning into this week's video if you liked the video please click the like button and share it with whoever might find it useful if you have any questions or suggestions for me please fire those off in the comment section down below and if you haven't already please subscribe i'll have a new video out every friday so thank you very much have yourself a great day and god bless